So here we are with Vagrant Song. I have a little bit of a basic setup. I'll give you a brief overview of all of the sections out here so you can get a good glimpse of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it as opposed to just starting to play, but I'm not gonna give you 100% complete rules walkthrough. If you wanna read one of these hefty books or the scenario books, um, you know, you can go do that. But what do you need to know? Now, obviously I have my player characters here. I have my little acrylic standees. They're very nice and they have the little base stands. And then I have what are referred to as haints, my little ghost guys here, if you will. And there's a bunch of these, let me tell you, there are a ton. And so it's really kind of cool. And so what you're gonna be doing is each scenario is going to be set up according to the book. And it gives you a whole little outline here of what you need to do and the setup and the wing conditions and all the special rules for that scenario in the first place. We'll talk about the board here just for a second so you can get a little bit better sense of what's going on with the board. I'm gonna pull it down so you can see a little bit better. Uh, we're gonna start over here and we're working our way around clockwise because this board is about three feet long and one feet wide. This down over here is the round marker. So rounds are gonna be kept track of. Now it only goes up to six, but if you get to six and you need to go to the next one, you just go back to one. It's important because there's going to be events that might be triggered on a certain round on certain scenarios. Now, if we go back to the top here, you have the humanity track. Now, the humanity track is interesting and you can't see it because it's kind of dark here, but there is this clear heart that you're going to be using to track the ghost's humanity. And so as you deal humanity, instead of damage to the ghost, you are trying to get the ghost to return to its human form, sense, free it from the afterlife. And so in a two player scenario, each ghost has eight humanity that you need to get a certain number of times and so you keep track of it and you just move it along until you get to eight and then it goes back over and when it does get to eight then we go back down to this end this is the other end this is the break end so a ghost or a haint will have a certain number of times you need to get broken in order to complete the scenario or to in order to complete a certain objective within the scenario a lot of the scenarios or i should say a few of the scenarios are going to be hey just you know save the ghost and so you need to get this down until there's none on here and again there might be events that are triggered on this as well depending on you know what scenario it is in the first place now we get to the bottom of the track here and there's a lot of things going on the bottom of the track here but we'll talk about some of the more important things first but let's talk about the characters below here so you can get a little bit better sense of what the characters do now here is a blown up example i'll give you of the wayfarer and this guy is a little bit different this guy actually has two spots down there you can see for junk. His junk is, well, uh, that sounds weird. Uh, he has two junk spots. That's items, essentially. And you'll see that on the side, he has these little arrow things, and they line up with skills, because that's because certain skills can only go on certain sides, and you can only have uh, two on each side. And so then you see, get to see a little bit of his iconography. His hearts, or humanity up there, starts at eight. And then you can see the shoe is his movement. So each action placed on there will allow you to move two spaces. Uh, each token on the little bag will allow you to rummage that many tokens that turn but the number there is how many rummage tokens you can have total we'll talk about that more in a second and the knock there the glove is the what you would need to roll to get a humanity damage basically like a melee combat if you will uh the spyglass is the investigate and you need a four or higher to succeed on investigate with the wayfarer and then healing healing yourself needs to be a three or higher and so you can see again that those numbers on the bottom there are referring to the die rolls that i'm going to be having to do and the number of dice i put out in terms of those rolls is equal to the number of the action chips that i put on those spaces in the first place and so that is in a nutshell what the characters are they have other sides that are called the westbound sides that you can see that are going to have significant penalties and i'm not going to go into that because if you get westbound i mean that means you kind of got knocked out but why and how that happens we'll talk about in a second because each of these characters has skills that i just mentioned that are going to go here and these are your starting skills and so there's a left one and a right one and so you have extra spaces that you can put in as you gain them and then these are your little action tokens that you're going to be assigning on these areas so we've talked about the health we've talked about that let's talk about said skills here for a second now, with these skills, you'll see that they have their own iconography themselves. Now, with these skills themselves, you can see that they have their own iconography. This one, for example, it goes with the targeting. You can target anybody. The range is zero to four, which means you can target yourself. Or in the bones. Bones is how many dice you're going to be rolling. Now, in this one, it's preset as two. But some of the other skills will have a coin there 
or some other action icon. And so for those, it's how many coins you put on the skill in the first place. Now this also, the check mark is success. So this is, the success is five. If I put one coin on it, it's now four. Now the interesting thing is the songsmith has an ability that if I only put one coin on this, then it reduces the value by one as well. So if I only put one coin on here, it's a three. If I put two coins on here though, it's also a three. If I put all three though, it's only a two. So then you can see it starts to build up and that's how you mitigate some of the dice rolling. Now, if you get wounded, you saw that I have these humanity chips that I am going down on the health wise because the haints are going to steal uh, or damage you in that sense and steal your humanity and get rid of it, not keep it for themselves though, because you're dealing humanity to them in the first place. And so if you ever run out of humanity you are then go immediately going back up to your full humanity but you get wounded and what happens is you have to flip over one of your skill cards and so you can no longer use that skill card until it is healed now healing happens in one of two ways one you can spend money in between rounds in between the scenarios to heal said wounds or leads me into the segue it leads me into the rummage bag that we talked about of those rummage tokens. And this is a main mechanism. Just like the dice rolling is going to be a main mechanism here, the rummage bag is another huge mechanism. So you are pulling randomly and a little bit of, not pressure luck, but mm, sort of trying to mitigate things. You'll notice that there also, this lies in with the cycle track. And we'll talk about what that means in a second to go along with these. With all of these, there are five different icons that you can see on the board. The little player aid gives you another example as well as all five of them. It tells you what they do when when you have them and so if you were to put one of your tokens on the rummage icon now again this doesn't tell you how many you draw this tells you how many you can have in your possession what your capacity is your inventory holding slots are and so each time though i only draw the number of coins i put down so if i only put one coin down i only draw one token and i can only keep that token but if i put all three tokens down i could put down i could draw three tokens now the tricky thing is though i can't keep all three not because I only have a two there, but because you only keep one per draw. So I would draw three, but still only keep one. And if you ever go over this capacity, you have to immediately discard to get down to that. So why does that matter? Well, I mean, you have this, right? But as you use them, because they're going to have specific uh, abilities, like the iron nails do two humanity damage to the ghosts. The candles make the ghosts target the candles as a priority target higher instead of the vagrants. The salt uh, prevents damages or effects from the ghosts. The lucky rabbit's foot acts as an extra action token for one round, and the apple allows you to heal said wounds and so they all have different uses but as you use them and as the haint takes their turn they are going to be placed out here and how does that work well in a round everybody is going to get one turn who goes first and what order doesn't matter but it goes player character haint player character ghost player character ghost until it's all happened and then after everyone is gone and a haint has had an equivalent turn then the round ends and it goes to the next round but on the haint's turn their main mechanism of action is going to be you pulling one of these random tokens from here comparing it to what it tells you to do in this book and rinsing and repeating and again on this book, you'll see right here that there are two different actions and selections for each character, for each ghost, because they have two different moods. And they're going to be able to flip back and forth the mood depending on the circumstances, depending on what's going on in the scenario. So it's another big thing you have to be aware of. Well, why does this matter? As I'm laying these down here, you'll notice that all of the tokens have a number next to them as well. The number indicates that if it ever reaches that many tokens in that area, whether it's pulled by you, the player character, and then discarded after you use them, or the haint uses them, then what happens is called the cycle effect. Cycling occurs. And so if it reaches, okay, two lucky's rabbit's foot, you take all of these off the board and then the ghosts, the bad guys, have a special cycle effect written right here. And again, it's different for the moods that's going to be bad for you. Now, obviously it replenishes this. So if the things you needed were out here and you were trouble pulling them, well, great. But also you're going to get hit with something that could be potentially very dangerous. So um, that's something to be aware of. Now, the last thing here is you have these special conditions, the special effects. These are conditions that will be uh, thrust upon you by the ghost themselves. Sometimes it is from events. Sometimes it is from actions. It is sometimes from 
these actions as well that are pulled. So it just depends. The other thing that the ghost can do is the ghost will actually try and move through you. So let's say, for example, the ghost was going to move forward, but it's already here in range. It's actually going to go as try and do as many pass throughs as it can in, in one turn or hauntings. So it's going to go one, two, three, or even four, depending on who's the priority target there. And so they all, again, being haunted also has a different effect here that you need to know about. And these are not always the same in each scenario. They are quite often very different and have different effects depending on the scenario. And there are two in each scenario that you need to be aware of that each of these ghosts have as their unique conditions. Now, two other big things, and then we'll kind of get right into the gameplay here. Um, uh, side note, you can see these are terrain. Terrain do not move most of the time. And terrain can be moved through by ghosts. So if the ghost is going this way, it can just go one, two, three, four. However, I have to go one, two, three, four around. So I cannot go through it. Now, the other thing that you need to know is you'll see these numbers down here at the bottom, these little numbered tokens, zero through nine. What those are, those are event tokens. Each of these scenarios also has up to 10 different scenario events that may occur. And this is the whole list. And so what happens is if you go there, that's where you can really use the investigate icon. So if there's the zero, I go there, I investigate. Now I may have to roll sometimes, whoops. Uh, sometimes you may just get an automatic success. Other times you may have to roll to get that. So my three plus. So that's the sort of stuff that you need to be able to do. And the question is, sometimes you may need to roll one die. Sometimes you may need two successes. So if you only have one die, there's no way you're gonna get two successes. So uh oh, you may have just screwed the pooch. Now, why does that matter? And Chris, you're going, well, that's easy. Well, I just put down a second token. Well, the problem is when you're doing your actions before you can take any of your actions, you have to allocate all of your action tokens. And the other thing I did not mention is that if you choose a skill, these side skills, um, if you use one of them, you cannot use it again the next round. Now, except for the Songsmith, this special ability that he has actually allows him to use this one every single round if he wants to, but most of the time, every other one is only, uh, you know, every other round, essentially. These event tokens are going to be placed on the board. They're also going to be placed on the break track as well as the round tracker. And they may be triggered by events that you do or that the ghost does in the first place. And so there's going to be lots of different ways that those are going to be activated. Honestly, sometimes they're even put into this bag and you draw them. So there's a lot going on. Now, the last thing we need to know before we get into this, I won't talk about seances, but I will talk about these ritual cards. These are three ritual cards that get placed out in every single scenario that are going to allow you to get certain bonuses that are maybe give you extra humanity damage or give you special benefits. These are also the things that are going to give you gold to buy more skills and junk in between rounds. And so they're very important, but they're not always easy. Now, the first one here is long stretch on a lonely road. If the turn faces moves from train card A to C or C to A in a single turn, complete this ritual. So the ghost has to move from here to here or here to here in one turn. How is that going to happen? Oh, I wonder how that's going to be able to be done. I wonder what's going to happen to get in order to, you know, figure that out. Uh, the second one, first blood after a vagrant suffers a wound complete this ritual. Well, I don't want to get wounds, but the only way I complete the ritual and get money and maybe other benefit is to take a wound. So I'm going to have to deal with that. And then strangers on a train as a team, remove two haint effects to complete this ritual. So I'm going to have to get affected by these things that I don't want to get affected by in the first place. And then I'm going to have to remove two of them just to complete that ritual as well. So um, all of that in combination with dice rolling. And there you go. So without further ado, let's get into the actual gameplay. So you can see how it goes. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll start off by reading you a little bit of the scenario. I'll give you the Cliff Notes version of it. I'll tell you a couple of the special rules that are in effect just for this scenario, because like I said, this different every time. Okay, so we place all this stuff out. The vagrants can start in any one of these four spaces. I'm choosing to put them there. We have our ghost here. Now you can see I put out a couple of the event tokens as well. You've got event token two here. I've got another event token just off of camera down here that's on round three. And then I have two other event tokens down here at this end on the breaks on levels, uh, breaks uh, one and two as well from that side of things. We'll pan here just for a second so you can see. Right there. Okay. And then we're back. So. What else do you need to know? Now, the two special haint effects in this round are the shakes and the shivers. Just kidding. It's actually the shakes, which lower your move value by one. And I have to, in order to get rid of this, I have to discard one of these iron nails. And then the spooked in this case is if I end my turn within two range of this little ghost guy, I lose two humanity. And in order to get rid of that, I have to discard a salt. 
Now, the other thing I didn't mention, but is very important, is if I break, if I do the break, then the Haint's turn is skipped immediately after. So that's a great thing in order to mitigate some damage that could be coming your way otherwise. Then in this special case, I get to rummage one as well. And as always, when you break, you also gain a humanity back. So victory condition, save turned faces. That's the name of the ghost in case it wasn't clear. And so what I'm doing over here is the break over here is set at three. And so I have to break the ghost three times in order to complete the scenario. When that happens, that's it. Now, you'll also notice that I have the little face up. They routinely start as the happy face unless you're told otherwise. The special uh, ability at this point for this side of the ghost is if they are adjacent to the break edge, the edge all the way over here, then I have to read event five. There's no cycle events though for this mood. You know, mm, not, not a good sign, right? And then if they haunt me, I lose in humanity right now. That's what it is. Um, so that's it. So there we go. Um, then what happens is you pick a player and you start. Now, again, I've got my curse breaker and I have my songsmith. And so I can just choose one to start with. I'm going to have these three tokens. And so, you know, I'm going to choose since the songsmith is right here, I'm going to choose the songsmith. But now again, I have to choose all three actions before I do anything. And so what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to choose a move. I'm going to choose this skill because this skill is actually really powerful. And you know what? Um, I'm also going to be rummaging here. Now I can do then once I've assigned them, I can choose any order in which I want to do it. But I have to then, you know, these are assigned. These cannot be switched. Like if I rummage and get something I really want, I can't move these around. So that's what you need to be aware of when you're doing this. Or you know what? Uh, you know what? Let's just let's just do this so you can see an example. Okay. So the move value though for the songsmith is only two. So one, two. And I know that based on the reading what the characteristics are of some of these attacks, the vast majority of the Haints moves are actually going to be going towards this breakhead because I'm guessing, well, spoilers here, and in case it wasn't clear enough, there's going to be spoilers because this is the actual first scenario. When this gets flipped over, that's usually bad. Okay, so I do that. So that's one action. Uh, then I'm going to rummage. So I just take one from here. I get it. And okay, I got assault actually. Okay, so if I get one of the haint effects, I can either block it or I can use it to get rid of one of the ones I talked about right here. And now the last action is this. Now again, this was the one I showed you earlier. The range is zero to four. And for every uh, time I can take this action, every success gains one humanity to the target. And so I'm gonna target the haint and uh, I, I get two bones here. And the success is five minus the coin. Well, there's one coin, but my special ability means I get one less as well if there's one coin on there. So the success is actually three. So let's see, we roll, we get a two and a four. So that does one success. So that moves the Haints humanity up to one. And then the turn is over because I've done all of my actions. So now for the Haints turn, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this and I'm going to go, okay, well, iron nail. So then I put the nail out here and we start counting them there. Now in this booklet, again, referring to the turn faces side, move towards the break side, three spaces. So now remember one, two, three, because they go in between. So no big deal right now, right? This is the first scenario. This is the first turn. Okay, there you go. Now then it's the curse breaker, but you're going, okay, curse breaker, one, two, three. So I want to move. I want to move. I'm going to investigate at a three plus. And you know what? The problem with her abilities is she's sort of melee. Range one, range one to two. So even if I go one, two, three, I'm still gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six away. So I would really have to be doing almost three moves just to get caught up, or is it worth investigating two right now? So I'm gonna investigate so I can show you what the investigation looks like. So one, two, three, then I'm going to investigate. Now, the first thing you do is you actually flip to the investigation page because some of these will actually be auto successes. Okay, looks like they left something behind. What kind of tramp starts shedding all their things? Investigate. Uh, if I get zero successes or more successes, then we can kind of see what happens here. And reminder, my success is three plus. So I rolled a six. Now, normally a six would be great because if you've ever heard of exploding dice with the Simon, sixes are what they call the bo box cars. And so if you get a six, you actually get to roll again to see if you can get another success. Well, I got one success. Um, for this one, I only needed one success. He says, oh, sure, that looks useful. Rummage two. So that means rummage two doesn't mean take two and keep two. It means take two. Let's see, I got a salt and I got an iron. You know what, I'm gonna grab the iron nail so I can maybe have that to deal humanity. And then, now in this case, you actually put it back when you're rummaging extra. You don't put it out here into the discard pile. 
Uh, and then I may give the other rummage token drawn to any other vagrant, though. Oh, well then, why don't I do that? You know, why don't we get that salt back out if I can actually find it here a second? And now, Songsmith has two salts, but now they're also full. Here, let's move this up here so you can see. Oh, and the third thing I was going to do, uh, you know, let's say, you know what? I forgot to assign it. Let's, uh, no, that was my rummage. I was going to rummage again, actually. So, um, but now I succeeded in this. So you take this event off the table. Uh, and then the rest of it is after keeping it at events tokens eight and nine. So you find the event tokens over here that we did not use. I find eight and nine. It says put them in what they call the bindle, the sack. Shake it up real good. And then remove event two, like we already did. And there you go. Okay, so that is that turn. Now again, then it goes the Haint's turn. Because I've done my three actions, right? Move. Oh no, I did not rummage a second time. Oh, I got another iron nail. So, okay, there we go. Now it's the Haint's turn. So now I draw, and now I drew an apple. So let's see what the apple does in this case. The apple... When we are looking it up in this mode, says moves towards the break side. Target Vagrant loses three humanity and gains the shakes if there's someone within range six. But I move two spaces first, but I have to move towards the break side, I believe. One, two. Now, is there anybody around six? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they're equidistant, and then it starts to go through this targeting priority order. And I won't go into that because there's about seven different targeting priorities that you need to be aware of when you're going to this. Long story short, um, in this case, it's the lower humanity i think it's actually the nearer one too so we're actually just gonna make it the curse breaker for ease and so they lose in this case three humanity so they're down to six and they gain what the shakes which i believe is this one actually nope sorry it's this one so now if you remember what the shakes is the shakes is lower my move value by one and i have to discard well oh good an iron nail so that's okay so then that is the end of the round because i'm only playing with two players i go over to this end slide the round marker up to two now at the end of the next round i'm going to be triggering event three which you can't see which i panned or i did not pan to but it's just off the board here um so we'll have another event that's going to occur so then rinse and repeat now again i can choose to play the curse breaker or the songsmith now I know a little bit because I've played this scenario, so I'm going to cheat a little bit. But in case you didn't know this, it wouldn't be as apparent. You remember that little uh, ritual card that I said they have to go from C to A? Well, they're getting awful close down here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to use the Curse Breaker. And I'm going to move the Curse Breaker. Um, you know, now a movement is uh, down by one. But I can discard one of these iron tokens at the beginning of my turn. Now that goes there again. Now it's two. So I lose this haint effect. But... I have cured one haint effect with that. So that's great because now I've got one of the two for that ritual as well. So then I'm going to go, okay, so I discarded that one. Now I've got all three of mine back. I'm going to move back three, one, two, three. And then I'm going to rummage again. And I don't really have anything else I can do, but you know what? I'm going to try and heal for the sake of healing because I am down to six and I would really prefer not to lose. And so let's rummage first. So I'll take the bag here. And remember, I just added the two events. So there's always a possibility I could pull an event. Nope, I got a salt. Okay, that's fine. Um, and then I, we will roll to heal. Now my heal is a four. So let's see. Five. Okay, so I gain one back humanity. So that's seven. So now, again, we go back to the bag for the Haint's turn. Okay. I drew a candle. Let's see what the candle effect is. The candle effect, move towards the break side three. Target Vagrant within six range loses two humanity. So again, I'm moving three, but I can move through terrain as the haint. One, two, three. Now one, two, three, four, five, six. There's no one within range, so no one gets damaged. And now it goes back to the Songsmith. And so the Songsmith is going to go, but I mean, the Songsmith doesn't have nearly as much range. And so that's the only problem. His ranged attacks are great because I can go up to four spaces, but if I'm moving, he only can move two. So if I'm gonna, let's say I'm gonna move two. Now rummaging isn't really necessarily the best thing for him because again, he can't get any more because we already have two salt tokens, right? Now, obviously I could rummage and discard one of them afterwards, but you know what? Let's just for the sake of this, uh, let's get, you know what? Let's use his ability actually, and let's use it on our friend in case this, and then we will move. So I get two bones. Um, the success is still three and I can maybe heal her as well. So I got one success with a six. And two ones. I'm rolling great. So then her, their humanity goes back up one. And then I'm going to one, two, three, four. And trying to get over to that way. So all of those have been done. Now again, 
going to the haint. Eight. Now this, this is a tricky scenario. When you pull one of these for the haint, when you pull, it's different than when you were to pull it for your own personal turn. When you pull it for your own personal turn, it counts as your rummage. When you pull it for the haint, you do the event and then you pull another one to resolve their action. So now that we have eight on the board, we need to see what eight is. Now, if we go back to our board here, okay, event eight, a mirror. How did that get in there? Find junk card 21. So we have now the busted mirror and I'll just read it without showing the camera. If you have the rummage token that matches a rummage token used after a haint within range two has taken its turn, that haint gains one immunity. So what that's meaning is if I have one of these tokens in my possession right here, actually, you know what, you know what I should do? I should just move these up onto the board so you can see what's exactly in my possession because you don't need to see the picture. Um, and so if I have one of these that matches what they use in their turn, and I am within range two, then they are going to take a damage. And they're going to take a hum humanity in that sense. So then I am giving it to my songsmith. And so that is my one junk spot. And say, let's see, what else does it say? If your junk slot is filled, if you can put it in your belongings, so you don't actually lose it. Uh, and then discard eight. So you don't have to put it. Now you're going to run into others that will actually get put right back in the bindle when they're not necessarily good. That's a whole other scenario, though. Uh, so there you go. And then I have to still finish drawing for the haint. Now another candle. So we're only at two. But do you remember what the candle does? The candle, again, in this case, does move the vagrant move towards the break side three spaces one two three if within range six one two three four five six nope range uh six lose two humanity well nope but now remember that special rule that i said at the beginning on the setup side of things if they ever end their turn on the break side of things read event five so now we flip over to that can't they see there's no door there turn the changed faces mood to the other side and perform its rabbit foot action. After performing the action, vagrants in range two of the turn faces lose to humanity. Now, you're going to wonder, what is said rabbit foot action? Because now we are not pulling from this top area that was matching the smiley face, right? We are now pulling from the frowny face. And so this is target the furthest vagrant. <coughs> Spoilers. Uh, I, I knew this was coming. Uh, move to the furthest adjacent space of the target, haunting any vagrants in the most immediate path toward them. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So he gets haunted. She gets haunted, actually. Uh, so if you remember what haunting does, now haunting in both moods causes a loss of one humanity. Oh, what did the vagrant just cause to have happen because I left her in train car a oh the haint just moved from c to a in one turn boom 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 look at that that is the ritual so ritual turned faces gains five humanity five humanity so now one to six so almost broken already all vagrants gain two humanity now i lost two because of that, but now I'm going to gain two back, and still at 10 over here with the Songsmith, gain one coin to use during the camp phase. So, that's the currency that I was talking about at the beginning that you're going to be able to use to buy things or heal wounds between the phases, either the skills or more junk that you can buy. So, there we go. That was round two. So now, we are done with round two. So I'm going to go down here, just out of sight, and you can see, I'll slide this ever so gently, you can see that the round marker is now going to hit round three, which causes event number three to be triggered. So now again, putting that aside, what is event three? And so you can see it to see how these events are going to be triggered in the game process in various ways. You hear something behind you, a heavy thud, and then a slow drag. Things uh, fall from the top of train cars all the time, right? Place event four in any open space adjacent to the round side, so the round side in car A. So I can choose any one of these four slots and put it there. Uh, you know what, let's just put it right there. Actually, you know what, let's put it right here so we can get it to a little easier. Um, then remove event three. 
Okay, and then event three is out. So now you're starting to see those other events, those numbered other events that weren't initially on the board start to show up elsewhere. And then we just begin round three. And so now you've seen a little bit of things. Okay, now let's see. Okay, so she's really close and she's got a little bit of damage, but you know what? I'm now within range with her, so I can really start to maybe pile on. With this ability, uh, reduce the skill's value by two if you've moved this turn for each success, target gains, uh, you know, coin humanity. Uh, you know what? Um, I rolled only rolled two dice, but if I can put three coins on there, um, that's pretty powerful. Because that is now I'm hoping I hoping I'm interpreting that one right. This one uh, gains one humanity for each of the haint effects that I have, and then for each success they gain additional humanity. You know what? Let's go bigger, go home, right? Let's put three coins on here. We're gonna roll two dice, and the problem is I'm not moving, so I still need five plus. So it might be actually more worth it if I move once and then maybe put two here, because then I can get the success down to four. So one, two. I don't really want to stay close, but I don't really have any other options. So now if I can get two successes here, that would be a four humanity. But if I can get one success, one success is going to break. Since I have two coins here, it's going to deal two humanity. It's going to break the haint, which means the haint won't get a turn to retaliate here. Yes, explode or die. So there's one success. And now I get to roll again. Two successes. Get to roll again. Okay, two successes. So those carry over though too. So one success is going to get seven, eight, and then you reset back to zero and then it carries over. So it continues. So we're already at the two. I go back to this end, which you can't see right now. I remove the break down to one and it triggers, as I showed earlier, event seven. So there we go. Event seven, the whole darn train starts to shake like a wet dog that can't be good each vagrant rolls one bone and resolves an effect based on the value rolled so we'll roll for the curse breaker first six move three towards the break side one two three and then we'll roll for the songsmith one gain spooked <laughs> awesome so spooked uh, spooked is this one, if you remember, which actually, pss, it's good because look what we have. This is what gets rid of spooked. So we will just play this because you can play it any time. And then we will actually just get rid of spooked. Oh, look at that. Second ritual is all of a sudden done. So this goes off right away. The turn faces gains five humanity. One, two, three, four, five. Now they're at seven out of eight again. Again, we gain one coin at the end of the scenario to get stuff to buy again. And since the haint broke, nothing else goes. We do not have to draw a penalty or their turn essentially gets skipped. Oh, and in this special scenario, we also both get to rummage and we both gain a humanity. Now this is not a big deal there. We're gonna gain a humanity there. And then we will rummage for the songsmith first because the songsmith, actually, you know what? For the curse breaker, we are actually, we are gonna do this. I, I should probably wait, but we're gonna do it because I need to be able to play one of these. Now he has played one already. Curse Breaker hasn't, right? So I am within range two still. I can play this, puts three out there. It's gonna deal two more humanity. So now I've broken the haint twice and it's back up at one. So now, uh-oh, that also triggers event zero. So let's see what event zero is before we uh, finish rummaging here. Event zero. The wooden beams that make up the train car walls begin to shift and slide outward, creating makeshift windows in the walls. But instead of seeing wilderness or the train yard outside, all you see are bright blue faces and the grinning wide. From now until the end of the scenario, the first vagrant to take a turn each round loses four humanity. Woo! That's not good. Okay, so that's, 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 I mean, this is escalating things, right? You know, you it knows it only has one break left, so it's going and it's going hard. So, um, we'll see. Okay, but now the turn ends. And so now we get to rummage. So now each only has one. Okay, so we've got an iron nail there again. And then the songsmith is also going to get a second salt. Okay, so but the haint's turn is skipped. And now we are back to the songsmith. And so the songsmith is going, okay, well, I would really, I would really like to, you know, <laughs> deal some humanity here. But the problem is my range is only two. So even if I go four spaces, one, two, three, four. Oh, one, two, three, four. Okay, let's do it. One, two, three, four. 
and we'll do this because I can do this skill every single time. Next round, I could not do this skill because I used it. And so that's what you need to just remember of. And there's not an easy way to track it, but it's relatively easy to remember because you only have, you know, two skills right now. So then I'm automatically rolling the two bones. My success value is three. And so let's see if I can deal some humanity damage. And so I do one. So not bad. Okay, so two. And then there we go. Um, and that's it though. That's the turn. And because I broke twice last turn, I'm not going to be able to necessarily mitigate it. Um, so now we go to the haint. We're going to get an iron nail. Now that's four. It's not going to cycle effect yet. And now we're on the second phases. We're on the, the spooky phases. And so that is, let's see, vagrants in range two, one, two, lose two humanity, then move one away from the turn phases. But it moves two spaces. So the problem is it can't haunt me because it can't end in the same square. So it's not going to be able to do that. So it's just going to move one. I am going to take then that two humanity, one, two, and they're still actually, you know what? It would probably go one, two, because this game plays the enemy smart. And so it'd be one, two there and one, two there. So they each lose two humanity. And then anyone who moves or, or anyone who loses humanity moves one space away. Actually, this one's a actually this one's a little bit confusing because it says in the text lose two humanity and move one space away, uh, but also below it it only has the range of the ability as one. So I'm not sure if that's a typo if I'm just playing this one incorrectly or what. So you can kind of see a little bit of what that is there. See what I'm saying with the iron nails. Uh, so we'll see. I'll just play it this way and we'll we'll figure that out later. Um, and so we'll move them one away. We'll move them one away, and that then is the end of the round. So we then we move the round tracker up to round four. So I still need to deal six. And so, um, you know what? Mm. The question is in this case, is it worth me getting a wound? Because that's what needs to happen to get this last ritual, to get another coin. And that would probably get me pretty close. Or do I just try and slug it out first? Now I could have used one of these salts as well, but I already used them on my turn. So I don't think I can actually use another one as a reaction because I already used one because you only use one rummage token per turn or, or maybe even, I think it's maybe per round. And so I don't think I could use another one then in that case, since I used them all previously. So um, let's see, what should we do? What should we do? What should we do? Um, you know what? Let's use the songsmith. Um, let's take the songsmith and let's, let's go big or go home. Let's slam this guy. Because this one is only going to give me two humanity if I succeed, no matter how many times I succeed. And then he's going to push him away, potentially. But this one is just going to roll two dice, and I get a success value of two now. And for each success, you deal one humanity. So, rolling two dice. I got one success. I got two successes. I get to Exploder. I got three successes. So, three successes. One, two, three successes. Now I only need three humanity, but... You lose four humanity since this one also went first. So eight down to four. And now again, the haints turn. And so I'm really hoping I don't pull an iron nail here because I really don't want the cycle effect. An iron nail or an apple would be really bad, but there's lots of other things. So let's see. Ah, crap, an apple. So now what do I do on the apple first? Vagrants in the same train car. Oh, yes. No one is in the same train car. Uh, move three towards the round side and lose three humanity. So absolutely nothing happens. But then... I cycle all of these. So I'm grabbing all of these, putting all of these back into the bag. Now I've got a huge bag to choose from. And now the cycle effect happens, which is something we haven't done. Vagrants in the same train car move one towards the turned faces. Then adjacent to the turn faces gain spook. Okay. Well, that doesn't happen because no one again is in the same train car. That's really, really lucky. Um, I'm, very happy about that. So now it's Curse Breaker. Now the problem is Curse Breaker can't use that ability. So I'm going to have to get closer and target gains each uh, one humanity. But then if I just get successes, you know, okay, so that's range one to two though. And I'm, oh, crud, I'm one, two, three spaces away. So I'm going to have to use a move. And then, you know what? I'm going to try and end this. I'm just going to go there and we're going to get two corn, two bones to roll and we're going to see now the success value is four plus on this one and her value i completely forgot about her turn her special ability it's once per turn after you are haunted the haint gains humanity so uh she didn't get haunted though earlier so it, nope that wouldn't have come into effect so now if i can get a couple successes here we can almost end the scenario whoa look at that one two so if i can roll one more four plus this scenario is over 
crap. Okay, so one, two. Nope. Okay, I didn't, but so now we're one short. Uh oh. Paint effect goes into action. So now we have the salt. The salt is vagrants in the same train car gain the shakes. Again, we're not. Oh, but this one has a move. Oh, crud. So move. Now they gain the shakes. So now everybody gains the shakes. And again, the shakes are this one. So the shakes again is lower the move value by one and I have to discard an iron nail. But you know what? If I would have actually been paying attention, you know what? Let's take that back a second. No, I, I won't because I, I won't do it because I, I can't. I'm not going to negate this, but if you were paying attention, I could have ended the scenario right there if I was really paying attention. But you know, that's all that happens with that. Um, vagrants adjacent to the edge or terrain in any, uh, car lose two humanity. Well, uh oh, Songsmith is going to lose two humanity. One, two. Now, if I wanted to play this out, okay, this is going to be now the start of round five. How do I want this game to end? If I start with the Songsmith, the Songsmith will lose four humanity. They will get a wound, but I would get this achievement. I would get this third ritual. And I know that all of these rituals will give humanity. And so that will end the scenario. Or I have the curse breaker do it. They're at six. They would go down to two and I could just discard the iron nail. That's the thing I forgot to do last turn. And I could have just taken the two humanity there. That's going to cause the last break. And so it's just depending on whether or not I want to do this or whether or not I want to get the wound because wounds will also cause, uh, you know, them the ability to be lost, but I can pay a coin then also to heal it later. You know what? Um, there are some achievements and objectives in this game. And so what I would do is, you know what? I will do this. I will start with him. I will go here. I will have him go and one, two, three, four, which causes then this to be wounded, which then achieves this before anything even happens. Turn faces gains five humanity. Boom. One is all we need. So gain a coin. We have all three rituals done and scenario is over because I have broken the haint as many times as I needed to do. That is the first scenario in Vagrant Song. So now that we've done that, there is actually another page that is the camp phase. And I would be amiss to not include this at this point. And so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be going through this camp phase. And this is what I was just talking about. And so you can see all of the various things that you can do with your money in terms of buying or spending them. But this is also where you can choose to get a skill. Now, the problem is you don't see this skill. And so it costs you two coins and it's a left skill and a right skill. So you at least know what side of the board it's going to be on. And so you can, you know, do it accordingly. Now, again, it doesn't matter which character gets it you get to choose but what you do then is you restore your humanity so humanity goes back up and then you get to clean up the scenario okay we can do that now the other thing is i won't read these but if you have victory as it says here you read scenario or moment whatever and if you get defeated you get this moment that you are reading instead from the rule book. And so it gives you a huge amount of those as well, depending on what you do. And then you get to spend your coins. And so the first thing you get to decide is whether or not you're going to spend them on an ability. And so this ability is left. The little dance might help move you out of harm's way. The emphasis there on one word in particular. And the right skill is looks like the saying the early bird gets the worm turned out to be true. And so they are skills number one and number two. So I take the skill deck and I can see right here, skills one and two, and then I'm choosing one or the other. And then if I choose to take one, I can take it. In this case, then it's the left skill and I can put it right there for next round. And the other thing that this mentions is then in order to get knocked out, all of my skills have to be wounds, right? And so this gives me more opportunity to stay alive in the other scenarios. And so that's something you need to know. The other thing I can spend, I can spend that other third gold that I got because the skill cost me two gold. I could spend it to heal this wound. I could take this wound into the next round and hope to get an apple if I really don't want to spend the gold because the other thing I can do with the gold is I can rummage to keep these rummage tokens or to draw new rummage tokens for the next round or I can spend all three gold and go for that junk pile that I had that I got this one from in the first place to get a special junk card to give to one of the player characters as well. Then you could also bank them. If I don't want to spend any of this gold, I can save it to the next round because maybe I only got two gold and I want to buy a junk and I didn't have any wounds because that could have been the scenario too and I could have passed on getting the skills and saved it up for something there. 
you can save the game then you can manage the vagrants if you want to move around the skills that are their options or if you want to move around the junk uh, and then witness the in-between this is the one thing otherwise that is also very different in this game so what you're doing is you're pulling out one of these cards and this one says one before the wind okay there's not much time to think between the cars. A little misstep here can mean missing a leg there. But thanks to those faceless things, there's no more time to think about losing a limb right now. Outside, pointed pines sway against the howling wind. At the end of the train, a faint melody reaches out. A fiddle player, faster than lightning. So this is then where you get to decide what you want to do, either A, B, or C, and you get to choose individually, player by player. You don't have to make a group decision. And so A is the cold minty smell coming from the pines, normally invigorating, feels distant and fragile. B, you can't help but imagine a great wolf being the source of the endless howl. Or C, the song is both familiar and not. It's uncomfortable, but not unwelcoming. So you know what? Um, you know what? You know, let's say, you know what? I feel like there is a wolf there, right? I feel that there is a wolf uh, you know, definitely, uh, you know, in the in the ground as the curse breaker. But the songsmith, the songsmith is going, you know what? The song is both familiar and not. So we'll choose different things. So B, there's no room for the train for those who are scared. For the next series, gain backbone. So backbone is one of these, actually. So we already got that. Backbone, when the haint breaks, gain two additional humanity on top of the one you normally gain. And removed after suffering a wound though so if i suffer a wound i lose that obviously and then c for the songsmith even as the song retreats the rhythm stays with you at the start of the next scenario gain one free move you may move as though you have a coin in that action so these are the events that are going to going in between that are going to be both positive and negative now this time they happen to be both positive for me but i will guarantee you that they are not always like that so there you go that is running through a full scenario full scenario camp phase and everything uh, this book has uh, something like over 20, 25 scenarios. Uh, so there you go. Uh, this game was provided to me by Weird Miniatures. Uh, I asked for a copy uh, if they were interested, and they sent me it. And so I am happy to show it off to you guys. And uh, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if you're interested. Let me know if this helps you in any more decision point uh, with it being on pre-order right now. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully I didn't screw up too many rules. I probably did, but um, hopefully none that broke the game in the first place. So you can get a better sense of whether or not this game is for you. And I will tell you right now, if you are interested in this, I can guarantee you all of the scenarios are drastically different they are not all the same they are not all like this you would be surprised at how much they can do with these events with these tokens and with this three train car board so um very very interesting um as always though thank you for watching uh hopefully you made it this far if you again if you have any questions let me know if you like this and you want to see more uh click subscribe and uh help me just you know grow a little bit okay thanks guys stay classy i'll see you around